The Death of Grass by John Christopher, 1956. This novel fits in with apocalyptic and post-apocalyptic literature of that time. We think about the pandemic in George R. Stewart's Earth Abides, the nuclear war in Pat Frank's Alas Babylon, and the post-war future of Walter M. Miller Jr.'s A Canticle for Leibowitz. But the author that John Christopher is most often compared to is John Windham, his fellow countryman. The Day of the Triffids had two events creating a catastrophe. Unusual lights in the sky creating blindness and flesh-eating plants roaming the countryside. In The Death of Grass, the catastrophe is famine due to disease in the grass family. John Christopher says of the origin of this novel and his comparison to John Windham, The starting point for The Death of Grass was a novel by Ward Moore, Greener Than You Think, in which the planet is swamped by a new variety of grass which grows everywhere and unstoppably, suffocating civilization in a blanket of green. I pondered an opposing speculation. What if a virus should emerge which attacked and eventually destroyed the Gramonia family? Grass is a comprehensive collective noun. It includes wheat, oats, maize, rye, and rice. How would civilized man cope with the catastrophe of universal famine? I was writing in the shadow of John Windham, a kindly man. My view was bleaker than his, and has altered little over the years. I recognize and venerate goodness in humanity, but do not assume it, or expect it. To that extent, at least I am a Darwinian. I think you can tell that the tone of John Christopher's novel will be very different from that in John Windham's. If you want to understand the tone of this novel, think The Road by Cormac McCarthy, crossed with The Day of the Triffids by John Windham. We see a realistic portrayal of the darkness of the human soul. In the first quarter of the novel, we have the setup for the catastrophe. And then the last three quarters of the novel is the journey to find safety. There is a blight killing the grasses of the world. It starts off in China, but eventually spreads around the world. With no grasses for carbohydrates or to feed animals, there is famine. Desperately, they try to find a way to kill this blight. It is to no avail. At first, we see the civilized world mobilizing itself in relief efforts for the areas affected. But eventually, it's every country for itself. With famine comes anarchy and chaos. In Britain, they're trying to use sanity and collective cooperation to weather the beginning of this famine. In this way, we see John Christopher reflecting in theme some of the things that have happened in Britain during the war. Our protagonist is John Custance. He lives in London with his family. He has a brother, David, who lives in a rural community in a valley that only has one entrance. He's inherited the farm from his grandfather and father. As they talk about the blight, he says he will be planting just potatoes and beets, no grasses, for the next coming harvest. And he urges his brother to move his family into the farm and they can barricade the valley. John and his family return to London, but they have this backup plan. One of John's friends is Roger. He has a position and sources within the government. He has some alarming news and they attempt to flee London. There's martial law. No one is allowed to travel. How will John Custance get his family and friends to the farm? On the road, they hear on the radio that the government has fallen. There is a newscast. Reading from page 93. The facts are these. The country's food position is desperate. No more grain, meat, foodstuffs of any kind are being sent from overseas. We have nothing to eat but what we can grow out of our own soil or fish from our own coasts. The reason for this is that the counter virus, which was bred to attack the Chung Lee grass virus, has proved inadequate. On learning of this situation, Welling put forward a plan which was eventually approved by the cabinet, all of whom must share responsibility for it. Welling himself became prime minister for the purpose of carrying it out. The plan was that British aeroplanes would drop atomic and hydrogen bombs on the country's principal cities. It was calculated that if half the country's population were murdered in this way, it might be possible to maintain a subsistence level for the rest. That news report comes about halfway through this novel. In just under 200 pages, we see the fall of civilization and a story of a desperate attempt to reach safety. 
But will they lose their humanity on the way? And is there anywhere that is truly safe? I think the death of grass is that bleak, hard, older brother of Earth Abides and the Day of the Triffids. Some might say there is a pessimistic realism to this novel. As civilization crumbles, we see racism, sexism, and brutality. It's rather shocking how quick this descent happens. I give this bleak catastrophe novel 9 out of 10. Recommended. Have you read any John Christopher novels? His name is a pseudonym for Sam Yude. He has a series of young adult novels called The Tripods. I have never read them, but they seem to be very popular. Do you shy away from bleak novels with pessimistic views of humanity? Let me know in the comments below. Until next time, keep reading.